Today, we're going to be making ambient music. But what is ambient music? Generally, ambient music favours tone and atmosphere over traditional music structures and rhythms. Some of its most famous exponents are Brian Eno, Boards of Canada, and Orteca. It's widely considered that Eric Satie was an important precursor to ambient music, and most of you watching will be familiar with some of his work, most notably Gymnopedy No. 1. The production aspects that define ambient music are ambience, of course, atmosphere, sound collage, soundscapes, and free-flowing generative arrangements. It often consists of very sparse melodies, lush chord sequences, with little to no rhythmic implications. In this video, I'm gonna make a track showing you how it's done. And if you're enjoying the video, feel free to like and subscribe. Pads are a very important part of electronic ambient music. Angelic dust, let's hear how this sounds. I'm going to open another instance of Cube now. And then I just want to duck the filter on both of them actually. Give it that sort of underwater sound. Here's the main filter. One of the other great things you can do with Cube is you can use samples. So I'm going to click on a corner, say this one here, and I've added some samples here from my library. So if I just click on one here, then you should be able to play it. <laughs> What we can do is we can go to the actual sound itself and we can reverse it, we can loop it. So I'm going to see what it sounds like if you just loop one portion of it. Maybe just change the attack and release of it. High pass. Low pass. Let's duplicate that channel because I can hear another note. So we saw the sample was in the top left here. Let's have it so that it's kind of fading in and away. Maybe we could get it panning left and right. So if I go to my LFO2 and have it panning left and right. Go to LFO2, do that over two bars. Just gonna adjust the audio file there. I'm gonna add another instance of cube. So there's a nice bit of panning there. Bass, pad, and let's try source C. Something very important in ambient music effects. And the butterfly effect sticking out a little bit. So, again, let's pull the filter down and maybe add some r more reverb. Turn the width up on the reverb. 
give it some more space. Maybe turn the size up, damping down. And this convolution reverb is great. I'm going to add the Icelandic Lagoon. Just going to add some delay to our main vocal. Maybe some convolution verb. What if I put it up the octave as well? That's nice. We want the track to move even more, so I think a bit of automation's in order. What I like to do is I like to add a basic logic, simple EQ, single band on every channel. You can hear that's quite, see I have quite a lot of control. As the track builds, we'll add a bit more low end into that pad. You're getting all sorts of eerie notes off the reverbs, which is lovely. Let's do it with the other pad as well. And let's change the CQ to high cut. You can hear those great weird notes coming off the reverb, convolution reverb. And then let's have the frequency on the vocals coming up. Now we can get into a bit of sound design. Let's add some sort of sound designy percussion vibe. Also put a delay at 16D. Uh, a little bit more feedback. Take the solo off. Play with the orbit. Let's set, set that to four bars. And definitely have add a vintage verb because who doesn't love that? And there we have it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you want more information on ambient production, head to the Lunacy Audio website where there's a great tutorial complementing this video. We've also dropped a link below to a few ambient tracks. Definitely worth checking out. Catch you next time.